Welcome to Bread of Life Evangelistic Ministries, Our Time in the Word. I'm your host, the Reverend Dr. Edward C. Ford Sr., pastor, teacher, author, intercessor, and watchman in the kingdom of God. Today's broadcast has been especially ordained for you, so please tune in to Our Time in the Word. God bless. <music> Welcome to Bread of Life Evangelistic Ministry, Our Time in the Word. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. Edward C. Ford Sr., uh, pastor and teacher of Bread of Life Church Online Ministry. And I want to thank you for tuning in uh, to our broadcast today. Our broadcast is entitled, uh, The Benefits in Christ. The Benefits in Christ. Uh, before we get into the message, I got a, a, a small announcement, and then we'll go ahead and get right into prayer, and then right into our message for today. Uh, my announcement has to do with the recent book that we just published, my wife and I. Uh, we published uh, this book. Uh, the book is called uh, Understanding uh, the Church, the Real Body of Christ. Um, and so you can go on Amazon and uh, get a copy of it, uh, and basically, uh, you know, we're asking you to do that. You know, it'd be a, be a great read. And what it is, is uh, it's, a, it's a simple read uh, in regards to the church, who the, what the church is, uh, all the very facets of the church, um, and, and really giving you the truth of what the body of Christ uh, really is. Amen? Amen. So, again, it's called Understanding the, the Church, the Real Body of Christ. If you go to Amazon, and you go into the search, just type in Edward C. Ford, and all three of my books will come up, and uh, you can uh, purchase them at your, your leisure. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your love. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness, and God, just who you are in our lives. It is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. It is you that sent your son, the Lord Jesus, the, who came, Lord, to this planet. And you, Lord Jesus, uh, you died and you uh, was buried and you rose again on the third day. And God, we believe that and we trust that. Uh, we put our faith, God, in you. I ask today, Lord, that no weapon formed against us as we study, as we talk and we teach today, on the benefits of being in you, Lord Jesus, uh, that, Lord God, that no demonic force will be able to hinder uh, your word from being broadcast and it will go forth. I pray for those who will be watching. God, touch their ears, their eyes, and their hearts. Guard them. Guard me and my family. Help us, Lord. God, we're dependent on you. And, God, we trust you. We trust you today as we plead the blood of Jesus. God, over this broadcast, over uh, Gospel America, television network, and of all those involved. We love you, and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As I had said, you know, today's uh, message is entitled The Benefits uh, in Christ. You know, a lot of people are saved. They are, they are born again. And a lot of people don't know what their benefits is in Jesus. You know, what, what are the benefits of being in Christ? You know, and a lot of times, you know, you witness and you talk to people and, and people will say, well, I, I don't need Jesus. And that, that's because they don't understand the benefits of being in, in the Lord. And they don't understand uh, not what it, what it means not to be in the Lord as well. You know, so, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this message as one of the first messages, uh, you know, coming uh, to you uh, with our time in the word. The first uh, scripture, and one of the things I also want to preface before I start is that, you know, I like to take my time. Uh, I am going to uh, go to each scripture. So if you got your, your Bible, you can turn, you know, with me as I, I, I give you the scripture. Uh, I, I believe the word of God is a true, authentic word, and that, you know, we need to, to have scripture for things that we say. Um, and 
you may even see me use my phone sometime for definition. So, you know, let's, let's really dive into God's word and let's grow and let's learn together and let's, let's mature uh, in the things of God. Amen. And so, you know, one of the things that we can declare is that in accordance with Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one, verse three, and I'm going to take my time again and, and go to the book of Ephesians. And that way you can, you can follow with me. Ephesians chapter one, starting at uh, verse, actually we can, we can start at verse, verse one. And it says here, and I'm reading out of the uh, King James version. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says here, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You know, the first benefit that we have in Christ that, that I'm coming to you today to talk to you about is the fact that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. And notice it said, uh, you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You know, uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, I want physical blessings. Well, we know that in order for you to get uh, physical blessings, normally the spiritual blessing will come first. And then you will end up getting you know, uh, the, the physical blessing that would manifest. So how do, you know, how do we get these spiritual blessings? Because they, you know, first of all, you, you have to be in Christ, not out, out of Christ, outside of Christ, but in Christ. And so it, it, in order for you to have the spiritual blessing, you have to, uh, receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and savior. All right. The benefits of being in Christ, you know, it's, it's the all spiritual blessings that God, the father said, he, he's going to give you in, in heavenly places, not some, but all spiritual blessings. And, and so, you know, we have to do what the apostle Paul says in, in Romans chapter 10, verse nine through 13, where he talks about how that the word of salvation is in our mouths. You know, the word of the, the word of faith is in our mouths that if we will uh, uh, confess with our mouth and, and believe in our heart that God, raise Jesus from the dead, then we shall be saved. You know, so it is with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, uh, salvation is made by confessing for whosoever uh, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. So the first benefit again is that being in Christ, you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Amen. Now I want to also continue to read uh, that just a little bit before we go to the next blessing. And, and, you know, write that down, you know, by me being in Christ, what has God given me? God has given me all spiritual blessings, all, all blessings of, of what I, whatever I can think of of every kind. Now, the other thing to this, I, as I add balance to this, is understand that uh, when it comes to receiving blessings and things of that nature, uh, it, it also requires maturity. Um, I want to use an example, for instance, I have a grandson. Um, my grandson, uh, de facto, basically, uh, in, uh, automatically, when I use the word de facto, automatically, basically, uh, he pretty much has all the inheritance that I'm going to give him uh, from, his, from me, from his father, and so forth, right? However, and some of those inheritance could be, you know, the cars that we drive, you know, the house that we, we own. Uh, property that we may own and so forth. But uh, right now he's, he's not old enough and mature enough to handle all that. And so when we're praying, we're asking God and saying, God, you know, you blessed us with all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. One of the things that we have to be mindful of is that we don't want to ask God for things that we're not spiritually mature to handle. And I think a lot of times uh, Christians don't end up getting what they pray for because they're asking God for things that they don't have the faith for, or they don't have the maturity for, you know, I, I think that God is a very practical God. Just as we see that there's certain things we can't just give to our kids. There's certain things that God is not just going to give to you uh, if you're not ready for it. And so it's a matter of really asking and praying. And then not the Bible talks about asking a miss, 
you know, a mess, meaning in a way where all you're asking for is to, to consume it on yourself. You know, you don't really have any uh, real uh, uh, desire to glorify God in the things that he, he gives you. You know, we're, we're asking God to give us all these things, but then at the same time, we just want to just consume it on ourselves in, in, a, in a spirit of, of greed and, and uh, uh, just uh, asking to, 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 you know, just take all we can, can take and not really rent, wanting to render to give anything back. You know, that's, that's not, you know, how you're going to get the, any spiritual blessings that are in the heavenly places there waiting for you. And, and they are yours. And the Bible, because the Bible is true. The word of God is true. They, those, those blessings are there for you. Now, as we continue on here and we get to verse four, it says these blessings, it says is according as he, come out God, has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And God having what? Predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the, uh, the good pleasure of his will. And so, not only does, does God bless us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, but we also see here that God has adopted us into his family. And it says, having in verse 5 of Ephesians chapter 1, having predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. And so God basically has, has uh, adopted us into his family and has given us an inheritance and has made us heirs of himself. Uh, and heirs with with Jesus, Amen. Now, when we go to Romans chapter three, uh, verse twenty four, what are, what is what are the second thing uh, that we see as a benefit uh, in in Christ? Uh, and so, uh, let me uh, turn to Romans, and so we can we can get there and, and go from there. That way, you can you can follow along with me as well as you as you turn to Romans. Okay, uh, Romans chapter three, and then uh, verse 24. It, it tells us the second thing that I want to talk to you about in terms of the benefits uh, that we have in Christ. It says here, he says in verse 24, being justified freely by his grace, and, and, and when the his here is capital, meaning God's grace, through the redemption of, that is in Christ Jesus. Now, what, what does Paul mean by that? What do you mean when he says we're being justified freely? Now, that, that word justified, most of the time, is, it is used in a courtroom setting. Um, when a judge rendered you to be uh, not guilty, you have been made justified. So in, in a courtroom setting, Paul basically is saying that God is as God has justified us freely by his grace through the redemption, the redemption meaning the shed blood of Christ that he shed on Calvary. You know, he redeemed us through his very redemption that is in Jesus, in Christ, right? So we're in Christ. So we're justified freely through his redemption, you know, and through his blood and so forth. Now, that's important that we understand that because the Bible also tells us that Satan, he accuses us as the brethren, uh, the brothers of Christ. He, he, he accuses us daily before the throne of God. And the Bible, I think it's in Revelation chapter 12 that it, that it tells us that, um, you know. And so one of the things that we can claim is that when we know that the enemy is, is, is accusing us, uh, that we can say that we are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. We are adopted into the family of God in Christ, those blessings that we have in Christ, and we are now justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in who? In Christ. Those are benefits that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as we continue on, one of the things that we also see in the book of Romans uh, in terms of the benefits of Christ, we see in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 1. We're going to look at that very quickly. 
And it says here, Paul, and we know that uh, Paul uh, just got through uh, dealing with uh, uh, chapter seven, where he's he's dealing with sin and and uh, this sanctification walk. You know, talking about how sometimes the things that he want to do, he find himself not doing, and and the things that he uh, don't want to do, he find himself sometimes doing. And uh, it's like that for all of us. You know, uh, sometimes it, you know we 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 find ourselves uh, it's been difficult to 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 just do right all the time. It says when when uh, uh, you know, uh, he, 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 he's, he's crying out and saying, you know, what, who, who going to save me from this body of death, you know? And we know that's, that's going to be God. You know, we see that in verse 25 of, of Romans chapter seven, it says, I thank God, uh, you know, uh, in verse 24, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? And then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And so Paul got through telling us about this struggle that we have in regards to our flesh, the fleshy nature of man, but then dealing with what our desire, true desires are in God to want to serve God. But he tells us a benefit of being in Christ when we get to uh, 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 chapter 8, verse 1. And he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What is the benefit? The benefit is that there is therefore now no condemnation. God is not condemning you because you are in Christ Jesus. When you walk after the spirit, you listen to the Holy Spirit and not after your flesh. There's no such thing as as you know, you getting upset and I'm going to take my religion off, as some people say, and put it on the shelf or whatever. When you're in Christ, you're in Christ. There is, there, there is no, let me, let me take this off and put it on up, take this, you know, and so forth. In, in terms, in terms of, of you know, people say they use that phrase, my religion, you know, by the way, we're, we're in a relationship with the risen Lord, you know, just, you know, if, if you didn't know that now, so you, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Uh, you are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now the third thing that we see is that you uh, are not condemned. I, it says, uh, theref therefore, uh, there is now no condemnation, no, no action to condemn you when you are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's, that is a benefit. Now, as we, as we talk about these benefits of being in Christ, I think you need to think about them from the viewpoint of what about people who don't have those benefits? You know, okay, I have these benefits. I see what you're saying, uh, Dr. Ford, you're saying that I, I have these benefits. Um, but to make me understand really how, how, how important this is and how, how great I have, uh, I have it. Uh, what is the opposite of that? Well, the opposite of that is that you have people who are condemned because they're not in Christ. You have people who uh, are not justified freely by God's grace. The, the accusations of the enemy, uh, it stick, it sticks, you know, they, they are guilty. And then uh, you have people who are not blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Okay. So you think you got to think about it from that, from that point, that point of view, because a lot of times, you know, many of us, uh, we spend years at, in church and a certain portion of the word of God that we hear all the time. And it becomes uh, like a, uh, like we come, we, we become like desensitized to it, so to speak. We become desensitized to certain things that the word of God says about us. And you know, we, we, we lose that fervor of understanding the importance of how great it is to be in Christ and all of the things that are afforded to us because we're in Christ that we wouldn't have if we weren't in Christ. You know, the very vulnerabilities of being outside of Christ, you know, being, being to the point to where uh, now, you know, the accusations that the enemy brings against us, you know, 
the the effects of those can can really uh, come upon us because we are guilty. Uh, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But when you're in Christ, all that is taken away. It's not that people in Christ don't struggle with sin. We we obviously see that in Romans chapter seven that Paul talks about. But the the thing is, you're in Christ. You're you not you might not be better in in terms of humanity, but you're better off in terms of salvation. Okay. Now, when we look at uh, the fourth thing that we want to talk about is when we look at Romans uh, chapter eight uh, verse two, uh, he 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 continues on and he says, "For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death." So in Christ, you are free from the law of sin and death because you have the Spirit of the law of life or the spirit of uh, of Christ in you and, and and he operates your life now has been operated under the law of the spirit of 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 of, of holy spirit so you know um that's a benefit because you got to understand sin is what basically brings death you know the the, the wages of sin is death you know every negative thing that has taken place on this planet has occurred as a result of sin. When, when Adam made that one sin, that one sin has been the cause of the storms that we see that, that destroy property and, and, and kill people. Uh, the weeds we have to cut down, the grass growing too high, you know, uh, the envy, the strife, the, the, the maliciousness, the, the, the malice that people do to each other, man's inhumanity to man, all of the wars, all of the diseases, uh, all of the uh, 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 opposition uh, against man with the animal kingdom, animal kingdom against man, all of that came as a result of sin. And, and that one seed of sin has produced trillions and trillions and trillions of sorrow, of, 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 of darkness, uh, you, you name it, death, mayhem, even to the point to where, yeah, there are uh, billions of souls in heaven, but there are also billions and from billions of souls in hell. But then the benefit that you have is that the spirit of the law of life have cut you off or made you free from the spirit of the law of sin. One day, you and I, because we're in Christ, one day we will be, we will we will live and exist without knowing what sin is, and I look I look forward to that. You know, uh, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we uh, was regenerated. You know, we 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 were born again. We were converted. You know, people say uh, we had we had a uh, a salvation uh, moment, um, and immediately the Holy Spirit He put us in the sanctification process where we're being set apart and have been set apart by God while we are on earth. Now, being set apart don't mean that uh, you don't interact with the world because the, the world is your mission field. You know, you have to go out and you have to witness. You have to tell people about Jesus. But because you're in the world, you're not of it. You know, you're not living as the world lives. You're not walking as the world walks. In fact, you, you, you're walking out your soul salvation in fear and trembling. But one day you're going to be glorified. So you 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 uh, uh, you have uh, regeneration, uh, you have sanctification, but one day you're also going to have glorification, and glorification is actually when sin is totally removed out of your your presence. You know, salvation is you know I am no longer uh, subject to the the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin is taken away. Uh, sanctification is. Uh, even though I'm having to deal with sin, uh, with the flesh and with dealing with it in my mind, my mind wants to uh, do what's right and I'm, I'm trying to obey God. And so, so sin may remain, but it don't, uh, it don't dominate, you know, it don't reign, you know, you dominate it. Okay. That's sanctification. But glorification is you're not even dealing with sin no more. Not only the penalty gone, not only is the, the fighting against it is gone. But it's, it's totally out of the way where you live in such a way where you have a glorified body. You're, 
you're you're totally holy uh living in the kingdom of god and 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 and, and paul is saying here in a nutshell that uh even though you're still on earth in christ you are separated from that that sin and, and he says it in this way i want to read it again he says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death amen so what is um what is the fifth thing when you look at the benefits of being uh in christ well the, the fifth thing in regards to the benefits of being in christ is uh, we see in Romans uh, chapter uh, 8, uh, verse 39, amen? And so let's go there, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 39. Uh, he says here, uh, it says, nor height, nor depth. And then you get a chance, you can you can read the whole thing. In fact, you know what? I go to uh, uh, Romans chapter uh, uh, 8, uh, verse 38. I just go at one, one verse, and we'll, we'll read it from there. He says, for I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So did you, did you catch what he just said? At the end, he said that nothing will separate us from what? The love of God which is where? In Christ Jesus. One of the benefits that we have in Christ Jesus is the very love of God. A lot of people don't even know that they're, they're loved. But you need to know that you're loved. And Paul, Paul makes that point. Uh, he, he makes it by, by, by making the statement when he says, I am persuaded. I am persuaded this much about God's love that is in Christ. How much are you persuaded, Paul? I'm persuaded that no death, no life, no angel, no principality, no power, no thing present and no thing to come, no height, no depth, no in, uh, any other creature shall be able to separate me from what? From the love of God, from God's very love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son in John 3, 16, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. You know, God gave his son who is love. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love that whosoever believe in love, believe in Christ, should not perish but have everlasting love or Christ. Uh, you have, you're going to have everlasting love because you're in Christ. You have God's love because you're, you're in Christ. I mean, think about that. We have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. That's a benefit of being in Christ. We are, re we are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's a benefit of being uh, in Christ. Uh, we uh, are not condemned. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to us because we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, and then he comes back to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 39, and he says, not only do you have all that, but you also have the love of God, the love of God. You know, some people say, well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not loved. You know, nobody, nobody loves me, you know, and that's not, that's not true. God loves you. You know, one time David had to think himself happy. You know, sometimes that's how it is in our lives. Sometimes, you know, it's not going to be your uh, sibling. It's not going to be your mother and father. It's not going to be someone at the job. Uh, it's not going to be anybody else, but it's going to be you realizing that no matter what, I'm believing what the Word of God says about who the benefits I have in Christ and who I am in Jesus, and I know that God loves me. And that's that's one of the things that that you have to be sure of, that you know that God loves you. Uh, we want people to uh, like us want people to love us. It's good to be uh, accepted and so forth. But if nobody don't ever accept you and you're in Jesus Christ, you're still blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God still loves you. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. 
you are still justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? And as we continue on in the benefits of Christ, we also want to look at Romans chapter 12, verse 5. So turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 5. I pray that you are being blessed by today's broadcast, and we're going to continue to move forward because uh, we still have a little time. We can, we can share uh, more with you. Please write these scriptures down, you know. Go back and study them. Look at them yourself. You know, one of the things that we, we live off of is the word of God, you know. Uh, that's how we live. The just shall live by faith. And, and, and basically, what is faith? Faith is when you, you, it comes when you hear the word of God. Is when it says, the just shall live by faith, you know, a lot of times people, that's an that's a abstract kind of out there, and people don't understand, what, what, is, what are the, tangib the tangibilities of that? What, what makes that tangible when you say, I live by faith? What it basically saying is you live by the word of God. Because faith come by hearing, and hearing by God's word, by the word of God. God's word has faith in it. It's con it contains faith. Faith comes to you when you hear God's word. And that's what, that's what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're giving you God's word so you can hear it, go back, glean from it. And not only that, you know, it, it's, it's not about just faith itself. I, you know, we need to understand that, that God's word is life. There, there are a lot of people that are dying on the inside, and they're trying to figure out, well, how can I get out of this mode of, of feeling uh, sluggish, uh, feeling like I, I, I'm not assured that, that, that I am saved, that, that God loves me. How can I get out of that mode? When you, when you really seriously cut the TV off, when you really uh, seriously uh, move away from the social media and you get into God's word and you, you say, you know what? The, the, the fasting that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next couple of days, the next three days, whatever, and I'm going to fast from TV, I'm going to fast from social media, and I'm going to dive into God's word. And I guarantee you, after three days of doing that, that, that feeling of not being assured, uh, that, that fitness of sluggishness and, and uh, spiritual immaturity and, and things of that nature will leave you as, you as you read God's word, as you meditate on God's word, as that word fill you up, then you begin your mindset begin to change. You, you begin not to be conformed to this world, but you begin to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind began to be washed by the water of the word of God. Amen? And so when we get to uh, our next benefit in Christ, uh, we want to look at Romans uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 5. And it says here, so being, it says, so we, being many, are one body, in Christ, and every one member, members one of the other. Did you, did you catch that? He, what Paul says is that we basically are members. We are all one, and we are members of Christ's body. You know? And so I want to read it again in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 5. He says, and you know what? And let's go to verse 4 so we can kind of get a context of it. He says, for as we have many members in one body, talking about our physical body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of the other. Now, one of the things I think that, that we've uh, uh, failed to do uh, in the body of Christ, uh, particularly here in America, is to really personify the oneness of who we are uh, in Christ Jesus. Um, you know, sad to say that within uh, uh, the American experience of the church, there's so much division. And that, and that, that division really isn't true in, in us being in different bodies. We are all in one body. If, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you've been led by the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit has translated you out of darkness and have put you in the kingdom of God's Son, Jesus, um, in your mind, you know, you may think uh, you are not one with someone of a different culture or 
uh, a different gender or so forth. But if we all are, are in Christ, we're all one in Christ. Um, and I think it's in Ephesians chapter three where it talks about uh, how that Jesus has made the two, talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, uh, one, and uh, he created one man, one new man, one body, and we all are being uh, grafted in, uh, uh, brought into his body. And we are all one members, one of another. And, if, you know, you know and if, we can, if we can get that uh, and really begin to really see no man by the flesh, really see people who they are in Christ, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, Man, we could we could do some some powerful things, some very powerful things, and and, and the reason why I say that is because obviously when, when Paul is talking about this particular message, how that how that, that one of the benefits of us being in Christ is 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 each other, the, the the family we have, the body that we're in, that that is a benefit to us. As he's talking about that, he he's also talking about how that each members of the body are different. You know, my, my fingers do a different function than my toes. My eyes do a different function than my nose and so forth, right? But also in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we all have different lanes and we do things. Some people do things in terms of helping the church to see better. We Some people are, are God's hands to, to help outreach and, and grab and snatch people from, from the flames. Uh, some people help the church to run better, to walk better. Uh, it, you know, it depends on where you are in the body. You know, and we know that in Ephesians, I think it's in chapter four, where it talks about how that, you know, some are apostles, you know, some are prophets, some are evangelists, some are pastors, some are teachers, okay? And, and, it, and God gives us these gifts for the edifying, the building up of the body of, of Christ. And so, you know, we all are running our race and, and we're running our lane, and, and, and there's no reason for me to be jealous of you because I need you, and you are a benefit to me because you're in the body like I'm in the body, and when you hurt, I hurt. When you succeed, I succeed. You know, we, and we all can, can help each other. You know, like the Bible talks about, you know, if you give a prophet, you know, a, a, a glass of water, you get a prophet reward. And it's like, well, God, how, how is that? Is God, you know, this prophet is doing all this fasting and praying and doing all this. And this guy come along and just give him a, a glass of water, and he gets the benefit too, <laughs> because we we all a part of this body. It's 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 like it's it's like you know the stomach can't the mouth can't say man I'm doing all the chewing and eating and going on, but but the rest of the body y'all benefiting from from me chewing all this food up. I mean it's in a, in a sense it's almost like that that principle, you know when when you know you you can say you know what I want to I want to uh, uh, be a blessing to you know, bread of life to, to uh, Dr. Ford and everything. And I'm sitting here studying and, and, and gleaming from the word of God and praying and doing all this. But because you give, uh, you know, you, your time or whatever it may be, you know, in, in the fashion that you give it, time, talent, treasure, you know, you end up getting the same benefit, you know. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a benefit of being in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, We'll continue on. We're going to do about 15 more minutes. And, of course, we're going to have to do a, a part two uh, of this. But what are, what are some other benefits in the body of Christ? What's, what's the seventh thing we want to look at benefits uh, in being, by, you know, what, what are the benefits of being in, in the body of Christ? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and uh, let's look at verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Uh, well, like I always say, I'll start with the, the verse before it and, <laughs> and then go from there. So it says here in verse 1, uh, Paul says, uh, Paul called to, to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sostenus, our brother. Then he says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So did you get that? He said that we are sanctified in Christ and called to be saints. So one of the benefits, the, the seventh benefit that, I, that I'm looking at here today 
in regards to being in the body of Christ is that we are sanctified and that we are saints. You know, we didn't have to go through some type of church council and they deify us, uh, you know, make us saints and, and build us up. No, the fact that you are in Christ, the Bible said that you are a saint. And, and I want to be honest with you. I'd rather be the type of saint that God says I am out of the Bible, out of the Holy Bible, than for a group of men to, you know, write up some type of, you know, certificate, give me some type of ceremony and say, now nah, he's a saint. No, God basically, by the Holy Spirit, putting me in the body of Christ, putting you in the body of Christ, gave you the benefit. One of the benefits is that you are saint. Now, what does that mean? That means you're set apart, you know? Uh, set apart for what? You're set apart uh, unto God uh, to do uh, good works, you know? Uh, you know, God, God set you apart so that he could use you as an instrument uh, in the earth to uh, bring about his will and to cause glory or bring glory to his name. You know, that's why God is calling us out. You know, it's all about an ax, you know, when they had the council there, you know, so what, you know, what God is doing in the world right now, you know, God is calling out a people for his name, you know, the, the church, you know, and you know, Jesus said to Peter, you know, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, we are to call that one. And then you heard of the word Ecclesia, you know, uh, but, but in surrounding all that and looking at all that, we we are set apart to do good, not set apart to do evil, not set apart to do to do bad. You know, you have to take on the identity of who you are. I am in Christ. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. There is therefore now no condemnation to me. I am you know for those who walk not by the the flesh but by the spirit. I am justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I am loved by God. God loves me. You know, I, I am a saint in, in God. I am, I, I am set apart, you know, and all, all the rest of the things that we're talking about in, in terms of the, the, the benefits of, of being in Christ. Amen. And so as we can, as we continue on, when we look at first Corinthians chapter four, uh, verse 10, it says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, it says, we are fools. Uh, well, let's go back to verse 9 again. Go to uh, chapter 4, verse 9. He says, this is, this is Paul again. Paul says, for I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, he says, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle to the world and to angels, and to men. Then he says, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. Did you catch that? And then he says, we are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. The thing he said here that, that caught my attention in terms of being in Christ, he says that we are wise in Christ. And, and that's something that, you know, you can, you can claim, you know, you can claim wisdom in Christ. And that's what we, we need to do. We don't need to, we, we, we should not put ourselves down uh, and talk about, you know, uh, dullness of the mind and, and to, to, you know, say that you can't do something and so forth. But if, if you ask God, God would give you wisdom. And he'll give it you. He'll give it to you liberally, because in in Christ it is already stated that you are wise. We are wise in Christ. Ask God for the mind of Christ. Ask God for wisdom. You know, there's some things that you want to uh, accomplish in terms of of, uh, of of knowledge that you want to to gain, uh, and 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 understanding about what you're getting, and then you want to have the wisdom to apply it. You know, how, how do we get wisdom? You know, number one, we ask God. 
But wisdom comes as a result of knowledge. And then uh, in order for the next step for wisdom to actually develop, you have to have understanding of the knowledge that uh, you have. So, uh, for instance, I know what a car is. I understand how to drive a car. But it would be unwise if I take that car and run 90 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. I, I have knowledge, I have understanding, but I like wisdom. So what is wisdom? Wisdom is taking knowledge and understanding and legally and morally applying it in such a way where it benefits you and others. That's what wisdom is all about. God, I wanna have wisdom to learn the, the things that I need to learn God, in your word, uh, not only that, but I want to be wise, Lord God, uh, to learn things maybe in the secular world that I, that I, my job that I'm doing, maybe there's an occupation or entrepreneurship or a schooling that you're going to. God, I want to be, be wise uh, in those areas because I really need, I need wisdom. Help me, Lord. And, and God will do that. He, he will help you. He, he will help you uh, surely. Amen. And so that's one of the benefits that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the benefit, I say again, we have the benefit of wisdom and being wise in Christ. Now, some of you probably say, Dr. Ford, I hear what you're saying, but man, there's some, some uh, very ignorant Christians out there. And the reason why you know they, they are is because uh, they have not taken the time to really pray and apply themselves to all of the benefits that they really have in the Lord Jesus. And, and so, you know, uh, a, a person can only uh, partake of that which they know. And now as, as I'm, I'm explaining this to you, and you know that you are wise in Christ, according to what uh, Paul has said here in Ephesians 4 and 10, why don't you go to Jesus? Why don't you go to him and, and ask him, God, I need wisdom. I, I, I need you to, to, to help me to, to, to be wise in, in, in what I say, uh, wise in my actions. I, and God, not only me, but, but Lord God, my, my spouse, my children, my siblings, my mother and father, if they are alive, uh, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, God, those who are running the country, God, help us. We need wisdom. We Help us to be wise in you. That is a benefit in Christ. Amen. And so as we continue on, um, we also see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse uh, 22, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Go there real quick here. And, uh, and, and uh, we're going to go back to verse 20. It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead. We know that uh, 1 Corinthians 15 is a resurrection chapter. And he says, for, but now is Christ risen from the dead and, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Did you, did you catch what he said right there? He said, in Christ, all have been made alive. When you're in Christ, you're not dead. You are alive. Now, that, that statement, you know, people may look at that and they say, duh, you know, I'm, I'm in Christ. You know, Christ, you know, is the, the, living, the, the risen and living Lord. And, but a, a lot of us as Christians, sometimes we live as if we're dead, you know. We, we live as if we have no animation, no, no optimism, you know, no, uh, no life. But Jesus says, you know, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. And that's, that's what I want to emphasize to you today. Paul says here, he says, for as in Adam, all die. And, and, and if people are still in Adam, guess what? They're dead. If they're still in Adam, that's why the Bible says we have to be born again. You know, uh, Jesus talks to Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3, and he says, ye, 
you, ye must be born again. And we know the story of how Nicodemus, you know, asked him, well, you know, how can I be born again? Can I, can I go back in my mother's womb and, and be born again? Of course, we know this is impossible. And Jesus wasn't talking about a physical. He was talking about spiritual. You know, all of us have the blood of Adam coursing through our veins. And because we are a race of beings, you know, being a race of being, not an order of beings, you know, angels are an order of beings. They, God made them uh, singular. You know, one angel fall, he don't take all angels with him. But because Adam was a representative head and he had all of us, you know, de facto in him, when he fell, it caused all of us to fall. And so we all need to be born again, but born again where? In Christ. And where are you at? You're in Christ. And as a result of that, you're no longer dead, but you are alive. You live. Your spirit is alive to God. You can, you, you can go to God. Jesus is the mediator between man and God. You can go to God through Christ. And God will hear you. And God will respond to you because you are alive. And, you know, and, and, and you need to have that, that understanding that that is a benefit in Christ. Not everybody on this planet is alive. Some people are literally living only with breath of life. They do not have eternal life in terms of being alive in Christ. And so you and I, we have not just only breath of life, but we have the Zoe life of God, eternal life living on the inside of us. Because in Christ, you are made alive. And so I'm going to give you one more uh, benefit in Christ, and then we're going to pray uh, out, uh, and we have to pick up with the uh, second message on the benefits of being in Christ. So what is another benefit of being in Christ? Well, we can find that in 1 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 31. And, it, and Paul says here, and of course, we're going to go back and read from 29 all the way down again like we've always been doing. <laughs> and so when we get to verse 29, it says, uh, Else what shall we do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead uh, rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ our Lord. I die daily. You know what he just said there? He said that you have rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Now look at what he said again. He says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus. Now, if Paul have that in Christ Jesus, if he is rejoicing, then you also in Christ Jesus have the spirit of rejoicing. You know, so today, the things that we looked at as having a benefit in Christ, and that's not all. We got plenty more that we're going to talk to you about as we come on, you know, in the subsequent weeks. Uh, we have rejoicing in Christ. In other words, we have joy in Christ. We, we are made alive in Christ. Uh, we are wise in Christ. We are sanctified in Christ. Uh, we are members of one body one members of one another in Christ. Uh, we have the love of God in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to us in Christ. We are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We have that in Christ. And finally today, uh, as I wrap this up, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and the heavenly places in, in Christ. I pray that uh, this teaching today has greatly benefited you and has really helped you uh, to understand what are the, the benefits or some of the benefits so far uh, that we have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I want to uh, say to those who uh, don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, that today you can give your life to Christ and so that you can partake of the benefits of being in Christ. If Christ is not Lord and Savior, then none of these benefits of yours. You, 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 you're still dead in your trespassing and sin. Uh, you're not blessed with all spiritual blessings in the in heavenly places. There is condemnation upon you. Uh, if you're, you're not a saint, you know, and even though God so loved the world, you have that love of God, that general love of God, but you don't have that fatherly love of God in terms of 
being adopted into God's family. And God wants to make you holy and blameless. You don't, you don't have all that, you know, that, 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 that wisdom that you need and, and that, that rejoicing that, we, that comes in Christ, the benefits that we have. But, how, but you can't get them. That's what this message is all about today. You know, every message that we, we bring, you know, it abounds to the, the, the souls of the saving of men, that, that men should be saved. And how do you get saved? Well, the word of God says that it is in your mouth, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. For it is with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Right where you are, just ask the Lord. Lord Jesus, please be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you rose from the dead, that God the Father rose, raised you from the dead. I confess that with my mouth. And Lord Jesus, I call upon your name. Save me today. Please, Lord. You know, turn from your sin. Ask for repentance. Ask God to, to save you. He will. And don't just say, well, I did that, and now I'm going to go back out in the world and continue to do everything I normally, normally do. It don't work like that. You know, when you, you sincerely, truly is born again, your works, your, your life is going to show forth the fruit that you were truly transformed you're born again. Let it be a sincere cry, a sincere desire. Let it be by faith that you truly do ask God for salvation. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you the next time that we come on for our time in the Word uh, with the second message and the benefits of Christ, of being in Christ. God bless.